Hello, ladies, gentlemen, and non-binary friends. Welcome back to another episode of Actress with Issues, where we bring you casual chats with the stars of TV, film, and Broadway. As always, I am your host, Juan Ayala. Thanks so much for tuning in. You know today's guest from the CW's Arrow and currently starring in NBC's Grand Crew. Please welcome Echo Kellum. Echo, welcome to the show. How are you? Thank you so much. I'm doing great outside of the perspective of global war, but yeah, doing pretty good otherwise. Oh what a time <laughs> to be alive. <laughs> Oh my god. I mean the roaring twenties, they they're not joking. They yeah. roar. That's for <laughs> sure. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my gosh. So to get things started, uh, we always start with a 60 second rapid fire game uh called Getting to Know You. So we're gonna just throw some okay. questions and see how many of these you can get through in uh under one minute. Uh we okay. always start with the easy one, coffee or tea? Okay. Tea. Drama or comedy. Why am I saying it's so strong? Tea. Comedy. <laughs> Hero or villain hero nope villain villain <laughs> film or tv film uh favorite comedy oh wow uh there's something about mary uh what isn't or who is an actor that's had a big influence on you oh so many uh denzel washington uh what's the last show that you binge watched uh 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 demon slayer what was your first non-acting job? Uh, I worked as a usher, box office, and concession stand runner at a movie theater. What is a movie that never fails to make you cry? Oh, man. Um, La Haine. And a movie that never fails to make you laugh? <clears throat> uh, let's say um, uh, Half Big. And uh, last question. Uh, describe your most memorable audition in three words and memorable can mean good or bad. So up to you. You know what? Uh, in three words, I I'm going to describe a, a memorable job because it is so intense. Um, had panic attack. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so Echo, uh, growing oh, up, were yeah. you exposed to the arts early on or was acting something that came to you a little bit later in life? Well, you know, actually I was very thankful uh that I, I was exposed to the arts very early on my brothers and sisters were part of this thing on the south side of chicago called the south shore culture center mm -hmm. and they had a little government funding to like hire piano teachers and certain playwrights to come into poor communities and let kids like perform and do things like that so i would see them doing that when i was like three or four and it was just something I immediately latched on to, wanted to get into. So I started off with doing like church plays uh, and then school plays. And then, you know, my mom was really supportive. So she got me, uh, there was this like open casting call for this kids theater agency. And she took me and I got in it and I started doing like theater for thousands of kids throughout the like Midwest, you know, for about three or four years, like from 13 to 17 and just, having these amazing plays and she and this woman Cassandra Parker she wrote all the plays herself she's like she started her own business and you know we you know performed at the field museum in front of like a thousand kids being bust in and you know the Medina Temple and just all over so it's very very dope uh and that's kind of where I, I cut my teeth and so there was very early influences that got me in and because you were involved in it so early on you know you you probably had this mindset like this is what I want to do I want to be an actor uh, yeah. Was there ever a point early on that you were having doubts or maybe like something happened that felt like a little roadblock for you early on? You know, it's, uh, I've always had the focus that I wanted to do acting. I, I, I just always knew it. Like my earliest memories, I just knew I wanted to do this and it's never wavered. There's been times in life where it's been tougher, you know, cause life hits you, I would say currently uh acting is still my first love but it's not on the top of my list of the creative um uh venture the creative uh projects i want to be involved in you know i want to be more behind the behind the um camera and directing more writing more and things like that um but it's still it's it's always a passion but it, there was never any real roadblocks i kind of always had a really dedicated focus toward it and uh, I want to go, uh, I want to chat about your audition for uh, yeah. Green Crew. Was it on, was it an audition process for like traditional or, or a 
with COVID now, everything's over Zoom and self tapes. And well, all. you know, it was right before COVID. Funny enough, it was a month before COVID hit, and yeah, you know, I went in audition for Phil. Phil's a friend of mine, and you know, we hang out. Uh, and he wrote a show about like the bar where we hang out and stuff like that. Uh, but you know, he was just auditioning everyone, seeing who like really fit best for the roles, and wasn't playing like favoritism or anything like favoritism or anything like that. Um, so I auditioned for Phil and Dan Gore, and it just felt very right. Like I, I, the, the character, I really obviously connected with. Uh, you know, we're not the same, but there's a lot of similarities and sensibilities that I felt like I really understood in the character, and I think we were just vibe. It was just it just gelled. It just felt really nice. And then after that audition, they wanted to test me, which is, you know, the industry term to have you audition in front of the executives to see if it really is a good fit or not, you know? So we did the test and the network and studio thought it was sufficient. <laughs> and so they, uh, Phil called me up and offered me the job. And I was like, so ecstatic. I like, cried you know on the floor call like my best friend it's like I got it. you know it's like so because it was something i really wanted it was a really uh phil first of all is just such a prolific creator and mm -hmm. just so talented and you know very thoughtful with the art that he puts out so i always knew i wanted to work with him in a professional sense even though we were friends you know so i definitely left at the chance to do it and like i, I cracked crack the joke but i would have you know, I would have been a writing assistant. It wouldn't matter. Like I would have came in and any perspective that Phil would have had me because uh, I'm just such a big fan of his artistry and he's just a great guy to work with. And, you know, so I was definitely thankful to uh, get to play Noah. Mm. And, and it came at a time that you had just like wrapped on Arrow and sort of that chapter was, was closing behind you. And what was it like going from an action in a drama show like that to a very lighthearted comedy? What was that shift like for you? Well, you know, I cut my teeth in Hollywood doing lighthearted comedy. I, I was on two uh, short-lived lighthearted comedies before I did Arrow. So, you know, I did Ben and Kate and Sean Saves the World. And then, you know, I, I pretty much studied mostly as a comedic actor in L.A., you know, uh, UCB, Groundlings, I.O., West, and whatnot. Um, so it was pretty seamless for me. I, I, I love comedy. You know, I love uh, playing these interesting characters. Um, but, you know, my first love when I fell into the arts was drama. So it was more like trying to fit into the drama world again when I came off these comedies to do Arrow. Um, but I'm definitely thankful to be back in the half hour realm. It's kind of more my speed. I just like to, you know, laugh and improv. And, fit. you know, even on Arrow, you know, I got to I got to be some of the, I got to do some of the lighthearted humor on there too. And they let me improv a little bit. But sometimes when you're, speaking specific tech it could be really hard to yeah. <laughs> throw in some improv uh you really know it all uh but even that said you know i worked at geek squad for like three years so that was like still a connection where you know i was still familiarized even with curtis and you know it's nice to be able to flip gears and go from drama to comedy i like to think that uh when you know i look back on my career that i i did a lot of different cool genres and aspects uh as an actor director and writer no. And, uh, you know, looking back at your years on Arrow, do you relate more to uh, to Noah or to Mr. Terrific? Hey, man, you know, that's a, that's a very interesting question. Uh, they both, uh, you know, I, I always try to find a thing in characters that I can connect with on a personal aspect. They both mm -hmm. definitely have things that I can connect with. Uh, I would say Noah probably a little bit more because, I know what it's like on these dating streets and, you know, I've uh, experienced um, the pain of heartache and, you know, I'm a hopeful romantic. So like, I could definitely connect with those things. I cry very easily, you know, watching the movies, whatever. Like I'm just, I'm, I'm in touch with my emotions. Uh, uh, I do therapy. So like, there's a lot about Noah that definitely um, I resonate with for sure. So in looking back at your career, um, is there anything that comes to mind that, you've learned over the years that you wish you knew earlier? You know, uh, I am so fortunate to be where I am. You know, if I look back even 10 years ago and you and told myself 
what I get to do and the things I get to be on, I, I would be like, you're insane. Get out of here. No way. That doesn't happen. You know? Um, so so it's not, I don't know if I would do anything differently. I, well, you know what? I guess if I did do one thing differently, it would have been leaning into the writing, directing aspect of my artistry sooner. You know? Mm -hmm. And if I could change anything differently uh, with acting, it would have been getting into improv right after high school. Mm -hmm. So those would probably be the only things I would have changed is like just getting after it sooner and sooner from that perspective. So uh, over the course of our show, um, you know, guests have talked about a number of obstacles that they've overcome from jumpstarting their careers to navigating mental health to representation and diversity. Does anything come to mind for you um, of an obstacle you've overcome that you're able to share with our audience? Our audience is, is lots of young actors uh, and artists. Yeah. So we'd like to sort of open that. I mean, there are obstacles littered throughout your entire career. Uh, I think the biggest obstacles, honestly, are ourselves mm. because we get in our heads and we don't think we're good enough sometimes. And we second guess. Um, the biggest obstacle is self-love, you know, because when you're really coming from a place of love for yourself, it permeates through everything you do. Your confidence shines through your connection, your aura. Um, the things you do are different, you know, how you treat yourself, how if you're kind to yourself, that doesn't mean, mean that like you don't take L's or feel sad or go through the emotions, but I just think there's this perspective of actors where we're so down on ourselves and always beating ourselves up. And it's an obstacle because we need to be our biggest fan. We need to be championing our artistry and our work more than anyone because no one's going to champion it harder than you, period. Mm -hmm. um, I'd also say the obstacle of, you know, just trying to make something happen when you don't come from wealth or, you know, you're poor and have to decide between gas and food you know like i definitely when i moved to la uh you know in my first year i made twelve thousand dollars total the whole year you know it's very difficult and i work really really difficult jobs um but if if, if i want to say anything to anyone it's stick with your art stick with your love not all of us can make it to will smith's level uh but i think there's plenty of work out there for people who lean into their artistry and treat it as a marathon and post a sprint, don't give up, who just take it one step at a time, one day at a time. You know, I'm doing a lot of that because, you know, I am shifting gears in my career in, in some ways and I'm going through those growing pains as, you know, as a writer, as a director, you know, I, get, I got so, get so close to these gigs and, you know, they fall apart at the last second and, you know, I got to pick myself up and just like, well, you just got to keep writing. You just got to be undeniable in your craft. And if this script isn't good enough, then I'm going to write something else and keep pushing forward. You know, Ari Aster is one of my favorite directors right now. And he did a short that killed the festival circuit. He got our agent. Boom, he's here. You know, except Hereditary, his first film was his ninth film he wrote. You know, so it takes time and dedication to really pursue your dreams and to make headway on them. And that's the obstacle that's internal. That's us. If we can get out of our own ways, then I really think we can have it all. Um, so 100%. we're gonna wrap up with a uh, final non-rapid fire round. Uh, okay. So no need <laughs> uh, to worry about timing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. uh, it's called Now That We Know You. So we're gonna just uh, throw some okay. questions your way. So fill in the blank. If I weren't working in the arts, I'd be? in the tech industry who would you trade places with for one day um hmm, that's a good question uh oh oh that's a good question you know what let's say warren buffett just one day in Warren Buffett's shoes and see what, what's going on in there. What's happening, Mr. Berkshire Hathaway? What's going on? You just split your stocks ever? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is the best advice you've ever gotten? Um, you know, I, I got 
two pieces of advice from the same teacher in, at the Groundlings, Mr. Jordan Black. And it was about improv, but I really think it was a larger life thing. And I don't know why, but it just resonated with me so much. And one of them was mistakes are gold in improv. And I was like, oh, that's so interesting. But it's like mistakes are how you learn. And also in improv, mistakes can create amazing opportunities to find something new that's different from the monotony and everything else. Monotony and everything else. The other thing he said that definitely was more profound to me was it's better to be, let me make sure I don't blow it up. It's better, I was about to literally blow it up, so I'm glad I thought about it. <laughs> it's better to be, wait, <laughs> okay, yeah. It's better to be wrong and bold than right and tentative. Mm. And that really stuck for me in the aspect of like, you have to just take action sometimes and not try to make something perfect. You know, you just gotta, even if you're wrong, just go in and figure it out. And I don't know, that's kind of been a metaphor in my life that's kind of worked for me. And then also the aspect of yes and in improv just the aspect of just saying yes to things and adding your own little state of mind and perspective to it. it seems like a really um a way to open you up in life in a lot of ways a way to be positively moving through the space that we call it yeah and uh similarly yeah. what is the worst advice you've ever gotten be realistic you know <laughs> like uh you know, I heard someone else say this too, but it's so true. Like, you know, I used to listen to Will's Wisdom, like on repeat when I was trying to like break into the industry. Every morning I would watch Entourage and, and Will's Wisdom because I'm like, I'm motivated, you know? Uh, but, you know, it, it, Will always talked about like, there's no need for a plan B because it detracts from plan A. And, people who are successful have to have a slight delusional quality to them because you think that something different is going to happen for you than has happened to anyone else, right? Most people are living in a place of, I'm just going to keep things chill and be realistic and, you know, not shoot for my dreams, but that is a place of stagnation mm. and in my opinion, and, and based on Will's Wisdom's YouTube video. Uh, but uh, just being realistic is just like, take a shot, take a dream. People who are just realistic are kind of, you know, heads down, not really seeing the opportunities that life can exist in. And isn't that like, I think that's the only thing that makes us different as a species is that we have, I'm butchering this, but I was at the uh, Natural History Museum, uh, uh, the Natural History Museum in New York and it, like it has Lucy and I was, I was like, oh my God, it's about like breaking down humanity, but it's like the aspect that we can think symbolically is really what separates us from any other creature is that we don't have to have it necessarily in front of us to be able to think outside of that realm, create gods, or create all these other things, right? And nothing about that is realistic in my opinion so don't be realistic take a chance yeah absolutely agree and uh lastly in 10 words or less what advice would you give to a young actor stick with it stick with it stick with it yo that's 10 words <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah don't give up i mean that's really persistence is key it's a marathon if you have a dream follow it and don't let anyone deter you not even yourself fake it till you make it for real yeah. even if you don't believe in yourself pretend you do if you're an actor pretend <laughs> you know what i'm saying like it's that's our part of our job it's a part of uh the art that we bring is that we can put ourselves in positions that other people might have been through and breathe life to that and help people heal and feel different things based on those performances and you know even a, even a fake smile at least is endorphin you know so make it till you make it don't give up stick with it yeah well echo thank you so much for for joining us on the show yeah. today uh well if anyone uh wants to give you a follow on instagram where can they find you uh 
I am on Instagram at Echo Kells, K-E-L-L-S, and on Twitter is Echo K. Awesome. And you can all uh, follow us on Instagram at Actors with Issues. Give me a follow at Juan Yal Official and check out our full video interviews at youtube.com slash actors with issues podcast or listen on the go wherever you get your podcasts every Monday and catch new episodes with Grand Crew Tuesdays at 8 30 Eastern on NBC and catch up on Hulu and Peacock. I'm Juan Yala. That's Echo Kellum. This is Actors with Issues and we'll see you next week.